Also, interviews on BBC Television and CBS Television as well. Okay, let's move on now to the next listener phone call. Hello, this is Kenneth Ang from West California, author of Weird Dragons and Other New Monsters, listening on the Genesis Radio Network. Last year in 2017, I published a book about a creature called the Mirror Monster, which automatically reflects any damage that is inflicted upon it back to the attacker. That is, if you punch a Mirror Monster, you take the same damage that you inflicted on her, leaving both of you injured automatically. Is there anything in science that would be able to produce this type of effect in real life, aside from the obvious quantum entanglement? Furthermore, I also created another creature called the Weird Dragon that gains power from the light of Jupiter and can only be killed by gold swords. Is it possible for the appearance of Jupiter to affect organisms on Earth in the same way that the moon affects menstrual cycles. Lastly, I want to state my respect for the late Stephen Hawking, who died last week, and how much his discoveries influenced my career as an author. How did Mr. Dr. Hawking affect your career? Well, you ask a lot of questions, so let's try to break it up one by one. First of all, what I do is I work on completing Einstein's dream of a theory of everything. We want an equation no more than perhaps one inch long that will allow us to, quote, read the mind of God. Just like E equals MC squared is an equation one inch long, it unlocked the secret of the stars. A secret that was kept hidden for thousands of years was unraveled by Einstein when he wrote down E equals MC squared. So, Stephen and I worked in the same general area. He made the first big breakthrough, applying quantum mechanics to black holes, showing that black holes are not really black at all. They're gray, they emit radiation. But all of us were working on the final theory, not just the application of quantum theory to black holes. No, no, no. We wanted the whole shebang. We wanted that one-inch equation. We wanted a new theory altogether that would explain everything. Now, at the, po- at the present time, the only theory which comes close is string theory. However, it's not proven. The Large Hadron Collider is not big enough to prove whether or not this is, in fact, the theory of everything. Now, you mentioned a whole bunch of other things, so uh, let's back up. First of all, mythical animals, do they really exist? The Loch Ness Monster, for example, Bigfoot. Well, it's always possible. However, biologists say, first of all, that you have to have a breeding population. That is, what is the smallest number of abominable snowmen can you have and be it self-sustaining? If you have only one or two, like an Adam and an Eve, then it would be very easy to extinguish it. However, once you have a breeding population of maybe 50 to 100, it becomes stable. Now, if you have a breeding population that large, it means you also have junk left over. You have waste products, you have bones, you have carcasses left over by that. And by looking at Loch Ness, we find no evidence of this. No bones of ancestors of Loch Ness monster, no feces, no garbage left over after their, after their breakfast or dinner. As a consequence, we tend to think that maybe these animals are in fact mythical rather than real. You also mentioned Jupiter. Yes, Jupiter has moons called, for example, Europa. Europa is very intriguing because it has an ocean perhaps larger in volume than the oceans of the planet Earth. Amazing, because our oceans are only skin deep compared to the rest of the Earth. Europa, most of the inside of Europa, is in fact a liquid ocean. What kinds of animals can live there for in Europa? Perhaps aquatic animals. Already NASA has plans to launch the Europa Clipper to that moon of Jupiter, and after that, perhaps put a submarine, that's right, a submarine, into the ocean of Europa, a moon of Jupiter. Now, we're not there yet, of course, that's still years into the future, but that is perhaps the most likely place to find life on the planet Earth. Okay, well, let's move on to the next listener phone call. Hi, 